Hello, everyone, to this week's Force Friday. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about faces. Uh, I get asked this question very, very often, which is, hey, this Force thing is great, and you're drawing dynamic figures, but how do I draw the face, and does Force exist in the face or not? So that'll be our topic of conversation today. Um, let's say hello to the rest of the bunch. Uh, how's it going, Swenley? Great. Excited to do some expressions today. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. Everyone put on their smiley face <laughs> for today's meeting. Turn those frowns upside down. Uh, how you doing, Return Jay? Good. I'm putting my anger face today. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good job. <laughs> you know, on a whole side note, um, I remember a self-help book I read years ago talked about how much your physical being affects your psychological being. And um, that it proved, I don't know if your dopamine kicks in higher or something changes to you chemically, but just by putting a smile on your face, literally forcing a smile on your face actually starts to change your body's chemistry. So, you know, it's kind of hard to be sad and depressed if you walk up straight with a forced smile on your face. After a while, your body like tries to catch up with the physicality of things. So just something to keep in mind, a little off topic, but. So, uh, like I said, today we're going to be talking about force faces, right? So let's head back to Photoshop. Um, what you see here in the thumbnail, by the way, is a, um, are images from the force anatomy book. Uh, it talks about some of the forces of the face, and we're going to go in further into these tinted shapes over here. This is uh, talking about the eye mask and the mouth mask. Oh, one comment I want to make before we dig in is I'm starting a new playlist on this channel, uh, Force with Mike Matezzi. Um, we're gonna start sharing student success stories. So I actually uploaded the first one uh, yesterday evening. So today, after you watch today's video, please go check it out. It's, by, it's about one of my former uh, mentee students. Her name is Quinn Ann. And uh, she wanted to get into, um, into art school. She was a high school student when I first met her. So especially those of you that are interested in getting a portfolio together for an art school. She wanted to get into Art Center, which um, is a pretty profound and prolific school here, an art school on the West Coast. Started in the automotive industry, and now they're, a really, they're really, really strong in the entertainment space. And they're right near Los Angeles. So a lot of the students get jobs in the animation studios. Um, so I worked with her, um, I think it was her senior year, maybe thereafter, you'll see this in the interview. Uh, but the interview will show what her artwork looked like at the beginning and then what we worked through. And then you'll actually get to see the portfolio that she and I put together. Uh, and then long story short, you know, she ended up getting into Art Center, right? So that video will show you the full like process that we went through. And I'll be putting up more of those. I have a couple of more of students that were trying to get into art schools and different art schools and what those portfolio looks, portfolios looked like. Um, and then I'll also start going into interviewing students who have gotten uh, jobs, some as recent as two weeks ago. And then I'm going to try to get, um, I'm going to try to start interviewing students I even taught 15, 20 years ago uh, for you to see like how their career, um, you know, where their career went after me teaching them all the way back to when I was teaching in New York City and where they are today. And I think those would be some amazing and interesting stories. You'd be amazed to see how somebody's career journey has gone from one place to another over the last, let's say 15 or 20 years. So please check out Queen Anne's uh, story. Like I said, it's, uh, it's on the playlist now and uh, that's it. So um, I also wanna to preface today before we get started with, there's a lot of videos out there. Uh, like, you know, we can get a lot of traction on this channel to try to get people in and say how to draw the human eye, <laughs> right? How to draw the human head. Um, but they're a little of a trap and I want you to be aware of that. And I'm going to preface this video with that trap, which is you're not magically going to come out of today's session, knowing how to draw the face with force. If you don't know how to draw, right. You need to know how to draw first. And what does that mean? That means understanding how force works in general, right. And how to use that line understanding perspective, right? Like just general perspective. You cannot draw a successful face or head without knowing perspective, okay? I hate to break it to everyone. Believe me, I've tried every cheat in the book. It's not gonna happen. You need to know structure and perspective. Knowing some human anatomy or knowing uh, you know, the human skull to some degree is a huge help and you will see that today. 
right? So knowing some of that, that comes after perspective. You can't draw the anatomy without knowing how to draw, right? So first you gotta know how to draw, then you're dealing with the anatomy. Now you're drawing with facial expression. So I just want you to be aware of what we're showing you today is like steps and steps deep. Sure, I'm gonna show you some tips and like tricks, right? Tips and tricks for drawing the face and things that the three of us think about. Um, but that's because you need to know how to draw first. And these are things that are icing on the cake. And that goes the same for any other videos that you go out there and watch. If somebody's telling you like how to draw the human eye or the nose or whatever, drawing faces, cars, whatever it may be, it's not about how to draw that thing. You're getting the tips and tricks from that artist, right? From them practicing and figuring out how they do it. But underneath that is always knowing how to draw. Force, form, shape. Those are like the main ones. And then with the figure, knowing some anatomy, therefore helps also, right? Um, and then you get to this stuff, the stuff we're talking about today, okay? All right, hope that all makes sense. Um, so like I said, it's not gonna be a how to draw day. It's gonna be, how do we get some more force and energy into expression and uh, a process to doing so. All right, and then let me get over here to my window so I can see what you guys are talking about. Okay, mostly hellos right now. Okay, so this thing about drawing the face, uh, we teach this in mentorship. It ends up being one of the steps. And if you're someone on the website and you have access to the anatomy section of the site, there are some tips and tricks on drawing the face. On the website, it's class number four, just to make the point I was just making, right? Force is first, form is second, shape is third, and then finally comes anatomy. And then it's like, okay, now let me start you know, drawing the human head. Um, this idea of eye masks and mouth masks, as you see here in the thumbnail, I believe I got this from when I started um, working at Disney. Uh, you know, nowadays you can look at something like The Incredibles, right? And they're all walking around these black eye masks and you can really see like, how does that work? How did, if you start seeing stuff with the abstraction of shape and as forceful shape, you can actually draw shapes of the face through the um, idea of the expression and create the shapes around that, have them present the expression, right? As you can see here, the shapes are different based on each expression, right? The shape of the mouth, the, the grinning mouth is very different than this sort of upside down mouth, right? Or the eyebrow going up versus more flat, like it's the shapes there, the silhouettes of those things are being manipulated and changed to make the expression. So when I teach this on the website, um, we work with Disney work uh, two times. We kind of come in at the beginning of form and we do something called Disney Deconstructs where I have students create construction lines on top of usually like the Disney Infinity toys or, the, um, or even Disney film stills. And that's a good step to recognizing when you look at, let's say even a drawing of Simba here, like it doesn't just happen magically. There's a lot of construction that happens to get to this place. And I, I brought this sheet in, and of course, Simba is close to my heart because as maybe some of you know, my years at Disney was during The Lion King. And um, you can see around here just how many notes there are, right? I, I had this, I went through my own little phase of imposter syndrome, I remember. Actually, it was just terror. <laughs> I wouldn't even call it imposter syndrome. It was more like terror of, oh my God, I got into Disney animation and I was super excited. And then I found out in like May or so when I was gonna I was gonna drive down in September, which is when my internship started. And all I kept thinking for those months is, wow, I got in. I'm gonna be the one guy who's gonna like mess up their movies because I cannot stay on model. I had no idea how to do that. Like it seemed so impossible to me. Uh, and that's why these model sheets are created, right? They're they're guidebooks, they're rules to how characters are created. And you start realizing like just how many darn rules there are to actually draw a character and stand model. And a lot of it is the combination of force, understanding form and the shapes that those forms make. And when you get to this level of understanding shape with force and form underneath it, well, then you can draw pretty quickly and use the shapes that can create the construction. And you start really seeing shapes making construction. And that takes a lot of practice, a lot of practice. And you really need to know construction in order to get there well. So anyway, I share this with you because it's a great sheet. It's a typical like character model sheet and start showing you all these notes. It's kind of fun to read through all of this stuff, you know? It's like, make sure the lower jaw connects to the cranium on the far side, you know? Cheek hairs curve away from the face and connect to the mane, right? Avoid parallels here, right? So some design notes, slight bulge at the eyebrow, right? So they want to make sure the brow is actually sticking out. There's notes here about the tear duct. Tear duct lines up with the edge of the nose shape, 
right? That's how specific some of this stuff gets, right? To really make sure that this character that Simba stays on model, right? So talking about shape and construction, uh, this is a drawing that I had done for a student in mentorship. This was an actual like Disney Bambi drawing and I'm drawing in red here. And this was the student's drawing. And the immediate note I had was, it doesn't look like Bambi. Okay, why doesn't it look like Bambi? Well, because the muzzle is being pushed down and Bambi's head is almost like Daffy Duck, <laughs> you see? Right, it's like you got this sort of elliptical shape here that's kind of stretched out and he's got this very upward sweeping snout, right? Which is, by the way, is optimistic, right? Like you'll notice most Disney heroes and females, the nose goes up and villains, usually the nose goes down. There's no accident, right? There's sort of this optimistic positivity about upward noses that are, besides them being cute or handsome, also is sort of like a positive, uh, concept, right? So I was just like, look, let's make this simpler. So I toned in the head. I said, this is the shape. You have to get this shape. Like no matter what, the shape's got to work. That's a silhouette. So I went down here and what you're seeing here in black is I didn't draw this. I actually just painted it out, right? I blobbed down this black shape and I kept sculpting it until I felt like it looked similar to Bambi's silhouette. And then with yellow, I drew in the form of it. Now, the trick here is, even though I did it from shape first, as I was doing the shape, I was aware of the form. It's not like I just copied a shape. I knew that this was the top of the head and at this corner is the brow and it's gonna go down to the bridge of the nose and out to the corner of the nose, right? Like all that stuff's in there. It's not like I'm just haphazardly making a shape. The shape is coming from the construction, right? So I'm having to manage that especially when you push into shape first, you really have to know the construction of, of the shape, right? There's a note again that Glenn Keane has on notes that he put out when he was an animator at Disney uh, that always that, and I love this statement. It says, know, um, know the shape of the form you are drawing, right? So here I am, I'm doing the shape. I have to know what that shape is, but it is of the form. So in a way it's almost like saying, I have to know the form first in order to get that shape, right? Very, very important, okay? Okay, next. So this has been happening recently. I've been pushing into drawing Disney heads um, pretty hard in mentorship now when students get to that phase, which is towards the tail end of structure and the different courses on the website. Um, this is one of my uh, mentee students. This was at the very beginning. Uh, she was drawing uh, Flynn, as you can see over here, and she's getting in the construction. You know, you wanna know, right, when you look at this stuff, and this is a 3D model, of course, but you wanna know how this is built, right? Like, it almost goes back to like these simple how to draw Disney character books. Like there's value in that, right? You wanna know, like, this isn't just a 3D model, like it's actually built. If it was a 2D drawing, you still have to know, like, how is it built, right? And what the student did really well here was go in and start finding the turning edges of the face, you know, making sure there's a side to the head and a front to the head. This is my drawing on the right. You can see I went a little long. He's a little shorter. The hair is a little high. It needs to come down a little bit. But I got to tell you, this was after me doing it with two or three students, and I was bombing on it. At the beginning, it was really, really tough, and I kept thinking, like, why am I having such a tough time with this? What I was doing at the beginning was I would try to basically study and analyze the shapes and the forms. And then things started to change. I decided you know, I'm just going to draw this head as if I'm drawing it. Sure, the reference is there, but I want to really take ownership over the process. So you can see very subtly in here, these like extremely light, uh, rough, loose lines. I started with an ellipse, right? I was like, here's a blob. I didn't even do like the ball and the face shield and all that stuff. I just literally drew an ellipse. And then you'll see here, there's a subtle S curve running through here, which was my impression of his expression, right, with the S across his eyebrows. So I got a center line in there, I got that, and I drew this like ellipse. And then I kind of plotted in like, where's the eye line, the nose and the mouth, and then I just like built everything else out. I kind of then formed the shapes and the structures and made it all work. But I like starting off super light and really rough, especially when something's new. The more I get to know it, the more immediately I can get to the answer. 
Otherwise, I'm going to start off very lightly, right? Soft touch, as we've talked about in the past, right? All right, I have other samples to show you, and then I have a list I want to go over with you, and then we'll start drawing. Uh, so that's one example. So I drew this just a couple of nights ago. Um, so this is the mom from uh, Tangled. And I was trying to show one of the students, like, look, there's not enough underwork. So you can see here my light gray drawing, and you can see how many lines I drew going across the front of the face. I wanted the perspective. I wanted to feel the full plane of the face um, to really understand the structure. And we talked a lot about eyeballs in this particular mentee session. Um, you know, these guys at Disney, and we're going to talk about one of them today specifically, they know anatomy, they know how to draw, they know force, they know form, they know shape. They know the anatomy of the face. They understand that eyeballs are balls. They're round, they're spheres, right? They're orbs, whatever you want to call them. They are round. One of the biggest, biggest problems I see when students draw faces is they draw the eyeball as just a shape. And it's not, and that shape isn't conforming to a sphere or an orb, right? It's called an eyeball for a reason, right? So make sure that you understand the roundness and you want to, you know, here, when I was drawing this, I was really thinking about the skin of her eyelid wrapping around the eyeball, right? I got to make sure that that really, really works. Okay. So lots of structure, right? A lot of structure going on. Okay. This is the same student as I showed before. This is a few weeks later. You can see how much better she started getting at this, right? Like this is a pretty darn good study of a solid head drawing from this 3D model. And the model is very well constructed. Now we talked about shape design and appeal way back at the beginning of live four sessions. What I think is amazing that Disney has pulled off is they've taken their design aesthetic of forceful shape and taken it out of the 2D world and put it in 3D. Like these are still actually excellent shapes. The ears, the skin, there's still like tapering in the lines, the eyebrows, the nose, right? It's all still in here and they are, they're doing it in 3D, which is pretty spectacular. So that leads me to the main guy that I have right now, my students look at is this guy, which is Jin Kim. He's amazing, I've got to say. You know, he's up there skill wise um, as a designer, I would say, with Glenn Keen. I don't know how he is as an animator, but man, when it comes to these drawings, they're excellent, excellent, excellent drawings, you know? So I usually have students start off with Jin Kim's work, um, typically on Tangled. Sometimes we'll move over to like Big Hero 6 or one of the other films he worked on. But the guy can draw, right? And he can draw really well. And he's doing everything that I teach, right? It's all in here. There's lots of little things that happen in here that I try and share with the students. There's tricks that you learn when you work at Disney Animation that I want to share with you. Um, one of them, for instance, is like the angle and tilt of the head usually relates to where the character is looking. So you want to kind of be aware of that. So for instance, um, here we have this force that's going this way, right? Like this, and that's the lean of the head. You'll see the lean of the head is going that way. And that's the open eye, right? So usually if you have a character leaning that way, this is usually the open eye, right? Cause we're leaning that way, right? And then the closed eye is usually the one on the other side, you see, cause it's open and it's going that way. Now you'll notice on this one is kind of the opposite. And that changes the emotion of the expression and the head tilt here, Flynn's leaning to the right, but his eyes are looking to the left. So it's a little more questioning, like, what are you talking about, right? I'm leaning one way, I'm leaning away from the subject I'm talking to, but still looking at them. Where this one is, I'm looking in, right? And as I'm looking in, I'm actually leaning my head in the direction my eyeball's going. You'll see that, so these two are similar, right? These two are both leaning away. This is very clearly the same as this and this, right? You can see the sternness of this one and the head kind of straightens out. So it's like, boom, really focused face, focused eyes, flat head, like it's leveled out. Here he's slightly tilting back with a look of shock. So, you know, we talk about force and rhythm in the body, but with the head, it's normally straight. It means something to tilt left and right and like which way the eyes move relative to the tilt in the face, okay? Here he's leaning forward with sort of aggression, right, with his forehead. Sometimes people will lean forward with their chin or their jaw. Sometimes they'll lean forward with their forehead. That means different things, right? So you wanna be aware of the tilt and force of somebody's head relative to what their expression is, right? And I think Jin Kim does a great job of that. He's also great, of course, at staying on model, 
The drawings are appealing. They have great force and, you know, form and shape design. The eyeballs are um, so subtly well drawn. <laughs> it looks like nothing, but they're typically the hardest thing to get right. And, and Jim Kim's using all the tricks that I remember I learned even at Disney Consumer Products when I was there of, of trying to get clear clarity in the eyes, getting those pupils really clear. Um, I, I look at this one when I think about that, like you could see just the crispness of the um, pupil or the iris pushing right up against the eye. When I was at Disney Consumer Products with Mickey Mouse, for instance, we would even take the eye and you would break the edge of the eye with the pupil. You see how here I have it sticking out a little bit. Man, that really makes the viewer see that character is looking that way, right? So it's another saw, you know, small trick when it comes to drawing, um, drawing the face and drawing eyes. Um, but anyway, like I said, the eyes are really tricky. And I think the challenge that most of my students have at the beginning is they draw that darn flat shape. And I'm like, Jin Kim's not drawing flat eyeballs. Okay. These are round eyes. He's very aware of the roundness, right? You can see that roundness in there, you know, and you got to keep that solidity going. The eyeballs, the irises, another simple trick is you got to make sure everything is looking in the same direction, right? You can't have people eyeballs going two different ways, unless that's the purpose of it, right? So Jim Kim, like I said, I think he's a great one for you guys to look at. I totally trust his work. He's somebody I can refer to you to go study. I've, I've been doing this with students of mine now for the last couple of months. He's an awesome draftsman, right? Great at drawing this stuff. So go check out his work. Um, here's a student of mine that I, met, I mentor. And uh, he took an interesting approach in drawing this. He, went, he really loved skulls. He when he started with me, a skull drawing of his would take about eight hours to draw. And now he'll pump out a skull in like three to five minutes, right? And we did that over about a month and a half's worth of time that we just kept trimming down the time and got better and better and faster and faster. And then I brought over this Disney assignment to him and he would take every um, character and create the proportions of that particular character's skull. So you can see Flint's skull has the longer jaw here, the stronger jaw. And he would start the study with the skull you could see underneath here the red line of the skull and man that brought him i have to say great success like really fast i think we can all agree that these are pretty darn good drawing they're a hair less angular than jim kim's but man they're great they're great drawings they're really solid the anatomy really helped uh the student um understand that it's just not about copying like shapes and forms, you know, it's like really understanding the structure and trying to get the force and the expression and so on, right? So, and then here's another sheet, same student. This was a couple of weeks later. Again, I think that, uh, I think her name's Mother Gothel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you can see the skull is still underneath there, subtle, right? Very subtle. And, uh, and just, these are great. I mean, I saw these and I was kind of blown away. I was like, damn, you're really like on it. They look like they're his drawings. That's where you want to get to. You can tell when somebody is sort of clumsily copying somebody else's work. These don't feel like that. They feel fresh. Like this guy drew them, you know, and he did draw them, right? He had a reference, but he rebuilt and redrew these faces, right? And that's where we want to get you guys, okay? So how to do all of this, right? Going back to my version here, you can see same thing. I did a lot of underdrawing. When I started doing any of these drawings at the beginning, I was like, okay, let me just kind of like get Flynn's shape. And I was doing this kind of thing and trying to get the shape. Now I could probably do it to tell you the truth just from doing so much of it. But I, I don't know, I had a hard time like making this work and really trying to make it happen at the beginning. And it felt more like copying, right? So the successful one I shared with you guys, what I did instead was I started very roughly. That's the drawing I'm talking about is this one, All right? So this drawing right here, here, I'll put it up here in the corner. Um, I drew that more like this. I said, you know what? I'm just gonna draw, this is the way I would do it. I would just go, you know what? I just need to draw a head, <laughs> right? It's that crude, right? So I had this head, um, and I drew a center line and I said, I want expression, right? So when we're drawing force, we want to under, understand ideas, right? We've talked about that quite a bit over the last few months. The idea of the pose. Here we're trying to get the idea of the face. The idea of the face, man, eyebrows are so important. To me, the idea of the face here was this S thing, right? It's like this sort of very suave look that he's giving off here, right? I think he called it his smolder. 
<laughs> in the film, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So that's his smolder look. Right. And once I had that, I could say, well, you know, that means the nose is here and the mouth. You can see his chin is pretty big. His mouth's pretty close to his nose. So I'm getting some of the basic proportions. And then I can start blocking this stuff out. Now, one thing to be aware of when you're drawing faces, a very important thing to be aware of, is whatever happens here, this is, the, this is called the contour, right? Whatever happens here, C-U-R, um, or O-U-R, um, whatever happens here happens on the other side of the face. And students forget this, like this stuff has to line up, right? There's, there's trenches here, right? It's like, here's the eyeball trench. You know, you have to get to turning edge, come back down, get to the cheekbone, get down here to the chin. So you have this like front plane and you have the side plane, right? You wanna be aware of that construction. Very, very, very important, right? And then after that, you know, I could start blocking the stuff out. Here, I'll, I'll try to fix this and saying his hairline. I know his hair I thought was split in the middle, but it's not, it's actually a little over to the left more. You know, so we can bring that down. Now, when I do stuff like this, I start looking at the shapes that are going to create the expressions and the form. So I want to see what the shape of the eyebrow is. I want to see what that, that shape is there of the forehead, right? Where the eye is angled. If I'm going to draw his nose, I want to be aware of like this shape right here. When I draw noses, I look at what that other shape is of the left cheek, the far cheek here, you know, to get that right. Uh, when I draw noses, I think I got this from Disney as well. I usually start with some kind of ellipse or a simple form. Like my nose, my real nose goes long this way. In Flynn's, I went horizontally, right? Like this. And it gives me a kind of ball. It's not about it being an ellipse. It looks like an ellipse. But to me, it has volume, right? So I'm thinking how round it is. And this is the bottom of the nose. And here's, here's the nostril. And his nostril is kind of pulling out. Why is it pulling out? It's pulling out because his mouth is tugging the skin over here. Right. So that kind of leads us to that leads us to some force conversation. Right. How so? Well, you know, this is a force. The force of the mouth here is tugging up. There's a great shape in here, which is like this uh, cheek shape that's up in here. And it gets manipulated, squashed and stretched based on what the mouth is doing. Right. So, you know, typically, depending on how high this goes, typically you'll actually start showing the effects of that up here at the eye, right? So let's say his eyes like this. I don't have it here that much because I went off of the 3D model, but as a drawing, I would actually push this up, right? Because that creates this shape. You see this right here? This is a straight to curve shape that's hiding very subtly in here is this shape, you see? So I would push on that cheek. That's a forceful idea, right? I'm starting to move stuff around. The fact that his nose is like this, and the nostril is pulling, that nostril is, um, is an applied force. It has an apex here. It's pulling this way, right? It's pulling up like that. So now I've got his eye like this. I want to be aware of the roundness of his eyeball as we were just talking about before, right? I want the roundness in there. I understand that roundness. I want to make sure that when I draw his eyelids here, that it feels like it's around the ball. When you draw forms, by the way, you, what Disney does very cleverly, especially in the 2D world was you draw the far edge of the form, right? Like the edge, the far left edge of the eye, the far left edge of the nose. You'll notice I don't really put much effort on this side of the nose. It really happens on this far edge, on like the silhouette edge of the nose that you're creating the form. So when I, if I put a little, if I make his nose, here's the ellipse, and I put a point at the end of his nose, that point tells me that there's a change in plane that goes across the front of the nose, right? I have this side and this side. So that point is really, really important, right? So, you know, that's how they would like shortcut through this. This isn't gonna look like Flynn, by the way, cause I'm just talking and moving shit around. But this, you know, here, let's, this is bothering me too much. This needs to go up, right? Needs to, I need to get it on that line. And then, um, you know, and then the same thing here, I would draw the eyeball. I want to get a sense of the eyeball. I want the, um, the thickness of the lid there, right? I want this to go around the eyeball, right? I want to keep making sure like I support roundness, right? That I'm supporting roundness. You see what I mean? <laughs> it looks like he's drunk in this image, right? Anyway, my whole point to this is there's a lot of form and stuff going on here. If I get rid of Flynn for a second, what I wanted to show you today is how would I start drawing my own faces from imagination, right? Like, what do I do here? Uh, what I normally do is I start off with something like this. I'll usually draw almost a kind of the, 
Loomis method mixed with boxes and so on. Like I'll get some kind of sphere in there. I like knowing where the turning edge is. I kind of like boxing out the jaw, for instance, like this, right? So there's like a sort of quick head in perspective. So how did I get to this? I got to this by knowing perspective, right? And knowing some basics of the head, knowing there's a turning edge here, right? It's going from here to the chin. Like that's all knowing how to draw stuff. I want facial expression on here. Maybe I want somebody angry. When I do this, that is an actual force idea, okay? You see that? That's me pushing down into this curve. So the eyebrows are pushing down, you see? Here's the brow, so I'm pushing down. This is pushing up, right? So you'll notice the eyebrow is doing this. There's a push down, there's a push up. Those are forces, right? Forces in the face, right? And then I get an eyeball in here, Sometimes it's good to put crosshairs on the eye, like I just did, by the way. That really gives you a sense of the roundness also. At least it helps me, I have to say, right? So here's a nose. some cheekbones in there, right? I wanna make sure they line up. A trick to that, by the way, while I'm on the subject is I call out this thing called the letter T in the face. I talk about the letter T as well for like overlap and such, T sections, but there's a T in the face also, which is when you're drawing a face, um, now let me draw a really crude diagram here. Here's a skull from the front view, right? Here's a skull. Um, you have this T section from cheekbone to cheekbone and then down the mouth and then under the eyes. You see, so there's kind of a T shape here. You wanna be aware of that because this cheekbone has to line up with the other cheekbone. So even though I'm in perspective here, like I have to make sure this matches up with this over here. Not this over here, by the way, cause that's not the turning edge. The turning edge to the front, to the side surface is all the way over here. This is me going around the corner and getting to the bottom of the cheekbone. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's another mistake I see very often. You know, and that turning edge will get me down to like the tip of the, the uh, chin over here, right? So, you know, that stuff has to line up. It's part of the perspective lineup of drawing the faces, right? So going back to um, force in this, I'm pushing down, I'm pushing down. I can take a look here at the, the eye mask. So the eye mask I'm creating here looks something like this. You see? Why does that matter? Well, it matters because if you really start to understand forceful shape, you can actually go in and do that. Say, well, I'm gonna draw this face, right? Here's the same face again. And say, I want this expression. I'm gonna go for the mask. You see what I mean? So now here I have the mask that I just talked about. Um, and it's already like conveying the big idea of one eye next to the other, right? So maybe here I have the mask like this over here, but maybe this one I change, maybe it straightens out here, right? So now the mask takes on a different shape, right? It's like, how does this straight line relate to this curving up and pushing out? And it helps me see those forces, right? Here I'm going straight out. I straighten that eyebrow out. Here I have the strong up to down. So this is more like not totally angry, but questioning, right? This is a questioning face. And then I have the mouth mask, right? So maybe the mouth mask is like this and this guy isn't a frown or angry, right? So here's the mask itself. And then I could put the mouth in this, right? So you can see that force pushing down that way um, within the shape, right? Within the shape itself, right? So I've been talking quite a bit here. Any questions going on out in the... Um, now in our chat, can you tell us about drawing different ethnicities? Ooh, that's another big one. I don't think I'll have time to do that today, um, Angel 3D Arts, but that's a great one for a future conversation. Yeah, ethnicities, different skull shapes. A lot happens in the eyes, I would say, for different ethnicities, a lot with the cheekbones, you know? Yeah, that's a great subject. How does adding force with my, how do you add force with any model sheet? Yeah. God, tough questions, <laughs> tough questions. Um, I would say before, how do you add force to the model sheet? 
there would be how to create the model sheet, which I think is another whole subject in itself. And then maybe we can work our way up to getting to that. Uh, maybe one of you guys, Swenli or Matunji, could jot these ideas down. We can talk about it in one of our future meetings because these are these are great questions. I think they're really valid and we can talk about them. Right now, I'm learning so much about facial expressions. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Marcus. Um, great to watch Mike's process here. Very interesting. That's amazing to see the force. Yeah, so like I said, you can see that there is force and energy in the face, right? That facial expression get controlled by it. You know, you see lots of books, and I think it's a fun exercise to just draw the eye masks and try to get different facial expressions, understand the forces. You know, like if I do this, here, let's let's do surprise. Surprise might be like, like this on both sides of the mask, right? So now I, it helps me kind of feel out the eyes and why the mask, you know, because again, it, it hooks up the eyes and where the eyes are compared to where the eyebrows are. You know, you have like a bigger sense of the full structure, like the whole thing is working as a unit. So when you draw eye masks and mouth masks, it gives you an abstraction of force at a very simple high level. It's not worth anything, quite honestly, if you don't know how to draw form, right? Otherwise you're just drawing flat shapes, right? And we don't want that either. We wanna see how this stuff works. I always love doing the one I drew here where you have like one eye up and the other one's down, All right? So here's another, uh, here's another mask. Usually, not always, and it'll change the expression, but usually if the eyebrow is up, the eyeball is open, right? Usually. You know, this one is closed. That means this eyeball is probably more closed. It's being squeezed in there, you see? So it usually looks like this, you see? You could have a high eyebrow. Let's do the same shape, right? Come up and come down with these forces and we have this kind of shape. This one I did in perspective, you can see because of the scale. So I can draw a line through there. You could have a high eyebrow come down like this and still have an eye that's closed, right? And that, that feels different too. Right, all of a sudden, that's not the same thing. You see, look, suave. <laughs> high eyebrow, closed eye, more suave, right? It's interesting, right? Before we had high eyebrow, eye open, totally different expression, right? So here we have this. Again, I would draw a nose in here. Let's maybe draw more of a, a downward shaped nose, right? Like that. We got another eyeball sitting in here. I want the roundness on the far end, right? So far end is over here. So man, the roundness of the eyeball really shows up there, right? And you can see how fast we can start getting um, expression out of all this stuff, right? So in closing, before I leave and I have one of the other guys come in, I want you to understand here, I created this list. I wanna have you understand that there could be a process here. First of all, draw for the idea, right? try to imagine what the expression or thought is that your character is having. Are they angry or sad? Are they thinking? What are they thinking about? What do they think about what they're thinking about? Start showing their emotion, right? Draw with the soft touch approach we've talked about in the past, right? Like sketch it out, be rough about it, allow yourself to, um, to find the answers. You don't have to immediately just go in there, right? Find the general big forces, forms, and shapes, which is what I showed you today. Find the big stuff first, right? Then slowly define the emotion of thought with force, which is what I was doing today, right? Like slowly start really trying to define that concept that you had at the very beginning. Check in with the eye mask and mouth mask. When you get better at it, you can actually go directly to the eye mask and mouth mask as I just showed you and get there faster and really use those tools. And then slowly, the word slowly here is super important, slowly tighten up the shapes that represent those forces and forms. I'm a Disney guy, right? My recommendation is go check out someone like Jim Kim, amazing artist, go check out those face drawings and learn from them. Don't just copy them, learn the tricks of the things that are going on. I shared some with you today with the head tilt and how eyeballs are usually opened in the direction the head's tilting in for looks. If it's the opposite, it means something different. You know, and don't just copy the shapes, try to rebuild his head drawings until you get good enough to where you're drawing more quickly and efficiently, right? Let's see, any questions? I think eyebrows can fit. Yeah, eyebrows are super big. I would agree, Sanjana. Um, yeah, eyebrows are huge, huge. Eyeballs, eyebrows are huge, right? Look, we've all been walking around with COVID masks now for some time. 
and covering up our faces and still you can kind of see a lot of expression through people's eyes, right? Sorry to repeat the question. Are there rhythms in the face? No, I didn't answer this. So great question, Fernando. Sometimes there's rhythm in the face and sometimes there is not. The face's job is not the same as the figure's job, right? It doesn't have to balance. It's not like your head's gonna fall off your neck if your face doesn't have rhythm in it, right? Remember rhythm in the body is to um, create balance so we don't fall. You could have rhythm in the face. You'll notice I did some drawings in the eyebrows, right? Where they were rhythmic. One was going up and the other one was going down. It doesn't have to be rhythmic, but it's definitely forceful. As soon as you have things working, you're talking about force, right? So, you know, grinning mouth, frowning mouth, Anything that's going on there is muscles contracting and pulling skin, and that's all very forceful, right? It's a good question. Could you talk about the mustache and the beard as forces on the face? Um, maybe one of the other guys can pick that up. And if they don't, I think that's a good note. That's another reason to do another face drawing one. I don't think I, I don't have time for that anymore. I want to give the guys to do to draw. Can you express force in things that have no curves, like robots? I know it's a strange question. Um, it's off topic. The quick answer is yes, you could definitely still have force and things that are straight. I would typically put a slight arc even in the straight things to make them more dynamic, but yes, you could still have force. Force is not about curves per se, guys. Force is in everything. I'm starting to sound like Yoda, but force is in everything. Um, it's rhythm that sometimes people uh, twist around between force and rhythm. It's more of like the human body is rhythm. Maybe the robot doesn't have rhythm, but it has force, right? Um, Don says, it's amazing how many expressions can be made by just tweaking small things. Yes, in the eyes and mouth. One of the notes that I usually get back from students when we go through this process is how easy it is to be off model and miss the expression because you could be three degrees, five degrees off on an angle and it's over. It's like a whole new idea, a whole new expression. That's how subtle the face is. And I think as human beings, we're accustomed to reading those nuances in each other's faces. So you know, it's like the hardest thing to draw, right? Because you know right away if a face looks like somebody's face or not. It's like, oh, that doesn't look like him. It's very easy to get to a bad, not a bad, but maybe a drawing that doesn't look like the person you were drawing, right? It's like so much accuracy in there. I want you to not worry so much about accuracy in the beginning. I want you to have the freedom to soft touch your way in, you know, and build up and then slowly adjust over time like a lump of clay, right? Back to the lump of clay metaphor, throw it down, slowly work on it, okay? All right, enough of me. Uh, let's get Mertunjay and Swenli in here. Um, why don't we have Mertunjay go first? Uh, and Swenli will close up today with um, some designy stuff too. Uh, you each have about what's quarter after, so about seven to 10 minutes, let's say, okay? Right. And I'll 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 run the, the chat. Okay, there we go. All right, there we go. Can you see that? Yes. All right. So, what I have for you is um, just Mike mentioned all the mask and like very really good concepts. Um, usually, you know, when I start to draw like face like so as you know like i've been uh, like a big fan of like gesture like the moment okay like oh you know i've been like <laughs> while while drawing so my basic um approach to this is i want to like come off mm, take a layer again all right so i want to like come off from the back this is just like a quick tip for you for you guys like how i've been like very gestural with the face as well you know so one of you is like, oh no, how do, uh, is the face having rhythm? Yeah, it, it really does have rhythm. Sometimes it has, sometimes it not. But, uh, you know, I would like to like, not, not to like exaggerate like a little bit and uh, force like some rhythm in it to make it like dynamic, okay? So what I do is like, I come from the back like this and then, you know, come off like this in the neck, like with the sternocolitis mask where there's like a, the strong muscle, which is called sternocleidal mastoid, which you mentioned, I think, in one of the post Fridays. And then, you know, I put like this kind of uh, shape in there, okay? So it resembles head. So that's how I've been like gestural with it. So now we're gonna focus on uh, the face and I'm gonna take a reference and then we'll just apply all this concept, right? Um, so let's see, here's a one reference. 
so Michael's been so uh, Michael the model, by the way. <laughs> so Michael the model has been so um, expressive in this one, right? So how how I'm gonna approach it? Mm, all right. There this is go. his infamous gorilla face. <laughs> <laughs> So what I'm going to do is, again, you know, as a, I don't want to be like, oh, no, this is like, like a copy. Oh, I'm not doing portraits anymore, you know. So I want to be gestural. I want to be dynamic. I still want to inject like force within it and still get like structure out of it. Okay. So let's say what you do, you know. So if you don't know like what this pose is like, this is, this pose is like more like this, you know, it's like a gorilla. Yeah, it's it's this pose is more like this. So see, that's that's the little thumbnail that's tell you it's like oh the the back is traveling from the uh, the force is traveling from the back uh, back to the neck to the face right there. So I'm gonna start off with that, you know, that that moment in there. So coming off from neck like this, and then putting in uh. A head shape like simply like again i i can be like really crude really forceful and then we can clean it up all all the time you know as as much as you like so don't be shy about it you know just just draw it i can make adjustments as well you know because i've been using soft touch i'm not using like very dark lines or something okay again soft touch is a, a great tool you know always always so i can be crude here Um, yeah, let's, let's do it again. So maybe not much talking, you know, <laughs> because I want to like pull it off in one go. So yeah, something like this, like a really crude. And see the reason why I did, did this, you know, see, I want to like some, some rhythm, like still some rhythm out of that. Okay. So now what I can do is like, I can be like a little bit structural, okay, to know like, oh, what the perspective is going on, you know, what those those kind of things. And see, again, as I did that, I knew that, oh, the chin is more like this, you know, as like the perspective goes. So, um, so the chin is more like this. And now, now it's like starting to resemble the structure of this uh, reference here, okay. See the eyebrows, like how it's going. And here's the turning edge. See, here's the turning edge mm, going off like this. Now I can still use like a lot of soft touch, you know. Again, just just to allow yourself to like flow into like the facial features as well, you know. Again, um, thinking of no structure. So if it's dark there, I can draw for you right here. So no, nose is also more like this, you know. You can use like a sphere as Mike told you or... Sometimes you, you might like, oh, you know, there's like uh, this uh, sharp turn, you know, <laughs> more like this. So you can also draw nose like this, but the circle is farther, okay? Because it gives so you like- are, If you don't mind me stepping in real quick, I want you all to be aware what Mutunji did really is he started with a shape from what I remember, a shape of the head, and then immediately broke into that shape with some construction, right? You got that eye line cutting across and the turning edge. So- Immediately, there's a, this, I call it ping ponging, you know, you're going from like one topic to another as you're drawing, and we went from shape to form very quickly, right? And then he's doing that with the nose, right? So yeah. it's knowing how to draw, right? And then ping ponging across the three things we teach, which are force, form, and shape to make the stuff come together. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. So what I can do is, and I now look, you know, when we got like the nose structure, that's pretty easy to like just you know make the eyebrows and uh, eyebrows and the eyeball there. So as you can see, like Michael the model is being so expressive again. So we can use the mask concept that Mike told about, and it's like oh you know look at this, it's like this mask you know going on, and now Swanley is gonna push this design. Um, I mean whatever face is gonna be but I'm, I'll be sticking to more of a realistic one, okay? So not, not pushing too much, but just being expressive with it. And now you can clean up again, you know? Don't, don't be shy about drawing. It's, uh, it's just a layer with drawing on. You can turn, out, uh, turn down the opacity and clean it up as much as you want. So I'm just doing it. 
see uh getting to know the structure of the skull like like how it how it's like performing you know what the structure of the skull is that really helps you know so that's why we usually ask students to like draw skull first and then like sculpt it like a little bit so you know really feel feel that out okay one of the glens uh glenting thought i i also love about structure is like he 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 says like oh whenever you're like drawing so feel your pencil around that form so okay so if you're like drawing a circle don't think of it as a circle but think of it as a sphere okay so it's more like that so what you're really doing is you're really moving the pencil around that form you know in layer, in like your mind so it comes out in on on the paper there okay see now this is again uh the reason why i choose this expression look here now this is stretching okay so you really want to insinuate that stretching of this uh like this muscle here right and then you can be like like this you know so <laughs> you can be crude that's uh that's the idea okay i can i can make like really really fast like quickly get great hmm. and see like his his muscles around his face like his chin and down below uh around the lips there is like really stretching like really feeling that stress so that's force you know that's force in his in his face there that's what i want in it some uh one of you uh, asked about mustache you know you can you can put mustache in here something more like this that's also like face you know that's like wrapping around your top of your lips there so anyway getting this uh and these are all structural thoughts you know that when i'm drawing here is like oh what where this coming from this is coming from the skull you know just like this is called the mandible by the way so um yeah some anatomy tips ear um yeah just like very very simple ear you know don't have to be like super detail but right now just figure out all the structure that you have and still we want to like capture the expression there so that's that's important see i does i eyes does a lot More like this you can give like you can give once you like figure out the structure then you can have like as much character as you want then you can like put more time in there like really invest your time in there and just like go your way you know? see i i'm feeling like the roundness of the eyeball there you know? that's like super important and the mask see like the with the soft touch that did that helps me a lot you know to put like the eye and the eye socket in the skull there so yeah that's pretty good and with the hair see like how forceful that is hey you know hair guys by the way the trick to starting off with drawing hair is the shape of it and then understand that that shape has form a lot of you know students draw hair and they draw they think they have to draw every hair like a line is one hair <laughs> right like you don't want to do that it ends up it just doesn't look right first of all it's just like too sloppy and not organized mm -hmm. you know what disney does is block the stuff out and it's shaped out you know you, you notice not every hair is drawn um, I like jo Joseph Scott Campbell uh, is an excellent artist and he's really good at doing that as well. He's kind of has a little bit of a Disney-esque uh, flavor to his comic book work. And he's even talked about that. You know, it's like chunking out the hair. Uh, it's almost like making a toy or something like that in a sense, you know. And again, it's not a far throw from what we look like in reality. In fact, it's one of the things that's coming up in the chat. I think one video I would love to do in the near future would be what is the comparison of um, drawing real faces to a cartoon? I'd love to show you guys how that jump is actually not very far at all. You know, it's pretty, pretty close, especially if we're talking about the Disney stuff. And then you, we can abstract even further down and simplify from there, you know? Yep. So how much time do you got? Uh, whenever you're done. You got a minute or two, so I can go over a little bit. Yeah, I, I think... So I had another one, but that will take time. So I, I think like I should give somebody some like hints to show his show off his skills. So yeah, I mean, uh, my my message to you is like, oh, just uh, start. You know, don't 
don't be scared of drawing. Like, even if it's a head, you know, you people usually scared, like, oh my God, I'm not going to get the likeness. You know, people go for the likeness too much. Okay. I know it's, it's like important sometimes when you're like making portraits or something like that, but you know, you can clean that up, you know, later, but if you don't get the structure out of it, you won't get like the shading and everything that you're going to, you are intent to do it afterwards. So yeah, get the structure, see like the expression, get the expression first. And then when you get all of that, then just like move on to different topics, you know, and the, let's say the shading and everything that you want to do, right? Okay. So more like this. All right. Thank you. I'm going to hand it over to Swendy now. Yeah, awesome, Tunde. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Right, and I think it will be fun to take the head that Matunje drew and see if we can push it more into design, you know, and as was uh, emphasized a lot of times during the stream, like learn the skull is so, so important, you know, because it's like the underlying structure of the face. Like people are often tend to start with the facial features, but then you get this, these balloons with features on it and everything is flat. So you want to understand the skull and how all the features and like the, the muscles and flesh uh, fit upon that. So let's see, I'll do something really quick here. So what's the idea, right? Like I find this face feels really long, like everything is pulling down. So I'm going to push that and I normally start with a four shape for the face, you know, regardless if I'm drawing characters or drawing more realistic, you know, the head is just a four shape and then we can get structure in there. So I want to emphasize like the pulling down of his mouth. So in order to do that, I'm going to place the eye line like really high you know, and notice that I'm changing direction here because I'm thinking about a turning edge. You know, I can add more form here at the forehead, same here at the back, you know. So I started with a shape and now I'm filling that shape with form, you know, and talking about likeness, like shape is such a great, great tool to help you get a likeness uh, relatively fast. Okay, so this is the jaw. Go over. I want to get a sense of a of a neck here. I feel this pulling, but the neck itself is like it's like this uh, bent cylinder. Now this would be the base of the neck. Sure, I get a good shape in there, straight the curve. Okay, so I have the eye line, I have the jaw. So this is usually, uh, or normally how I start the head, you know, and then you have the cranium back here, like the neck cylinder inserts at the bottom of the cranium. Uh, let's see, so I want to put the nose like around here and leave all the space down here for like the pulling down of the mouth. Now, so you want to be, again, talking about the skull, you want to be aware of this brow visor shape sticking out. You know, and then you have like this, this triangular bone here, which is where the nose inserts. You know, and then for the nose, you have the bony part. Like if you look at the literal skull, you will see this like bone shape, right? And then you have the cartilage, which attaches to that. Now, and for the mouth, I can see like this bulk here, and then I have this expression like this pulling down. Now I can see the lip like sticking out a bit here. And I want to make sure that I capture that expression no, so right now I'm mainly working with the forces and the form and shape kind of like emerge out of that. 
you can see this is like pulling down. Now this is wrapping around. So this right here, like the mouths, you can abstract the mouths like a directional force arrow applying force to these muscles at the sides. Now we can exaggerate this even more. Now, now that I have this structure, it's easy to come in here and place the eyebrows on top of it. I'm just like compressing. Now I want to think about, again, this brow visor shape, which is actually what's creating this, this eye mask. You know, it's because of the bone structure in that area. And we can barely see the cheek at the other side. But I want to feel like the force of his eyebrows, like really compressing right in the middle of the face there. And then you have the eyes, like kind of, you want to think about how the eyeballs like sits in the eye socket, you know, the placement isn't, isn't random. You really have to study how they fit in there. No one, no, well, maybe when you draw like super stylized characters, that won't matter that much. But as soon as you're going for a little bit of more realism and structure in the head, like you really want that. Okay, you can see the forehead here. So I'm building it it's like my showed earlier. What's happening on the contour must also happen at the inside because it's a symmetrical uh, form. You can see his ears right here. Now in the ear, I'm just drawing a simple shape. And usually the ears line up with the base of the nose. We can draw some simple shapes here within the ear. And for the hair, I can see how it's wrapping around the skull and the hair, move this down just a little bit. I want to push the shape of the hair. I can feel a strong, like a strong curve. Now this is one idea for me. Now this curve is coming forward and it's creating like a rhythm right here. It's kind of creating this S curve. You know, so by drawing ideas, actually, you can get the likeness, even if you're stylizing the, uh, the model, you know, because you're drawing the ideas of the model, it will be recognizable as the model. You know, so it's not really about copying shapes. It's more about what are the ideas of the face? You know, same with different ethnicities. Like what, what's the idea? If you focus on that, that will get you much more accurate, faster than trying to like copy anything. I want to break that here. I can see like a straighter moment here at the back and I think that will make this shape a bit more interesting. Now I have to figure out like what's the what's the form of the hair, right? So let's see, I can start drawing like a center line from that curl. And then I can think about the turning edge, going back. So that gives me this plane right here. Now, so as you can see, again, because I'm drawing ideas, I'm getting uh, like this, this feels like him, you know, I can see that I can see who it is, you know, and I wasn't even attempting to capture any or copy any kind of shapes to get a likeness. Now just draw ideas and that will capture the essence of the, the person. You know, even if you're 
caricaturing it or designing it. All right, I think I'm going to leave it here since it's time already. So hopefully you guys learned uh, a lot today. And again, especially if you're uh, learning how to draw, like really learn the skull first and how all the features fit on top of it. And then the, um, like the flesh and the, the flexible parts, you know, but the skull is really the basis. You know, if you learn that, it will make head drawing so much easier. All right, awesome. Thank right. you, Swanley. Yes, you're welcome. All right, guys, so in closing, um, I'll bring us back to Photoshop again real quick just to go over these steps. Um, like the figure, like anything you draw, remember, try to figure out what you're drawing. What's the idea? What is the expression? What is the emotion that this character is expressing? What are they thinking about? Draw with the soft touch approach, right? Come in light and gentle, or maybe sometimes like as the pros do, they'll come in with a different color or a different color pencil or a cold erase, but some tool, some way that lets you think and figure things out, right? Don't just dive in. Um, find those big general, keyword here is general forces, forms, and shapes, right? So you're massaging that lump of clay and you're trying to figure the whole thing out, but you know what your idea is. So you're, you're slowly making your way towards your goal, right? Then slowly define the emotion of, that, of those thoughts, right? The ones you had at the beginning. You're trying to find that with force. Force is usually driving the shapes and the forms. Uh, check in with the eye mask and the mouth mask. When you get better at it, those can come in earlier. You can almost start with eye masks and mouth masks. And then over time, you slowly tighten up those shapes and those shapes will be there to represent force and form combined. Shape to me is kind of like the ultimate final filter or glue that brings all the stuff together. When you get good at it and you really know how to do it, you can actually start with force shape and just draw there. Everything can be drawn basically with force shape. It'll show construction, it'll show um, force, but it takes a lot of practice to get to that level of efficiency. So we wanna get all the other information underneath uh, first, okay? All right, guys, so thank you very much everyone for coming. Thank you, Swenley and um, Return Jay, as always for your um, great knowledge and drawing for us today. Um, I got some really great notes today, guys, from, from you guys out in the audience on new videos. So. I think we'll do more face stuff. I think drawing the face is a really fun uh, topic. Uh, so like I said, I've got a list of about four or five things added today and uh, we will be seeing them soon. So have a great and safe uh, weekend, everyone. We'll see you next Friday. Take care, Swan Lee and Ratunjay. Yes, bye-bye. All right.